Today we're going to look at a nice limit. So in particular, we'll calculate the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine to the n evaluated at the square root of 2 over n. Before we get started, let's notice that this is an indeterminate form of type 1 to, the, to infinity. And that's because if we let n approach infinity, the argument of cosine becomes zero, but cosine of zero is one. And also before we look at a careful evaluation of this limit, let's do a sketchy calculation just to see what we might guess this limit to be. So let's start by recalling the Maclaurin expansion, in other words, the Taylor series expansion centered at x equals zero of cosine. So it's the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n power x to the two n over two n factorial. But if we take a quadratic approximation, in other words, a two term approximation here, that leaves us with one minus x squared over two. So notice I don't have an equals here. I have cosine is approximately equal to this quadratic polynomial. And this is actually a pretty good approximation when we're close to zero. And we are close to zero here, given that x is approaching zero with our setup where x is playing the role of the square root of two over n. Okay, so anyway, now let's look at cosine of the square root of two over n using this approximation. So that'll be approximately equal to one minus. So we have to square this and then divide it by two. So let's see, that'll end up leaving us with one over n when everything cancels. So that tells us that cosine to the nth power of the square root of two over n is approximately equal to one minus one over n to the n but that's a well-known limit. In fact, sometimes this is taken as the definition for this certain value. This limit is equal to e to the minus one. So that's a pretty nice value for this limit. Now let's see if we can calculate it carefully. So given the fact that this is of type one to the infinity like we decided before, that gives us motivation to set this limit equal to something and then take a natural log of both sides. So let's set L equal to the limit as N approaches infinity of cosine to the N evaluated at the square root of two over N. But that means that the natural log of our limit is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n times the natural log of cosine evaluated at the square root of two over n. And now from here, we'll do a change of variables just to make the limit work out a little bit nicer. So the change of variables we'll make will be replacing n with one over x. Okay, so that's going to give us the limit as x goes to zero, because as n goes to infinity, x will clearly go to zero. And then we'll have the natural log of, let's see, this will be cosine of the square root of 2x all over x. But let's look at this. As x approaches zero, this is approaching the natural log of one, but the natural log of one is zero, so the numerator is approaching zero, and the denominator is also approaching zero. So that means this is a nice indeterminate form of type zero over zero, which means we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. So using L'Hopital's rule, we'll take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator, and that will achieve the same limit. So we have the limit as x goes to zero of, so let's see, the derivative here will give us one over cosine of the square root of two times x, and then times the derivative of cosine of the square root of two times x. So that'll be minus sine of the square root of two x, and then times the derivative of the square root of two x, but that'll leave us with something like the square root of two over two times the square root of x. And so I use the chain rule there a couple times. Then we also have to divide by the derivative of x, but that's just one, so we're okay there. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. Maybe I'll take the constants out, so I can take a minus square root of two over two out. 
And then I have the limit as x goes to zero of, so left inside will be sine of the square root of two times x over the square root of x times the cosine of the square root of two times x. So that's where we are. Now let's maybe bring that up so we can finish it off. So we left ourselves with the natural log of our goal limit is equal to this object right here. But notice this limit that's left over is still an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. That's because the square root of zero is zero and sine evaluated at zero is also zero. So that gives us motivation to use L'Hopital's rule perhaps one more time. So let's see what we get doing that. We'll have minus root two over two out front, and then we'll have the limit as x goes to zero of, so we need to take the derivative of the numerator. So that's gonna give us something like this. We'll have cosine of the square root of two times x times the derivative of the inside. The inside is the square root of two x, but that's gonna give us the square root of two over two times the square root of x, again, using the power rule. Just to be really clear here, that's because this is equal to the square root of two times x to the half, if we take that x out of the square root, and then we can kind of easily apply that power rule. Then in the denominator, we've got to use the product rule along with the chain rule. So taking the derivative of the square root of x will give us one over two times the square root of x. We need to multiply that by cosine of the square root of two x. So that's the derivative of the first term and then times the derivative of the second term, but that'll be minus sine of the square root of two times x. And then we're gonna end up getting a bit of a constant as well. So from taking the derivative of the square root of x, just like we did before, we'll get a square root of x in the denominator, which will cancel this square square root of x, and then we'll pick up this same constant. So we have two square root over two. So we're left with something like that. But now let's simplify this a little bit by factoring out another square root of two over two and also multiplying this numerator and the denominator by the square root of x just to clear the denominators and the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so factoring this guy out will combine nicely with the one that we already have, leaving us with minus half. And then we'll have the limit as x approaches zero of, so we're left with cosine of the square root of two times x over one half cosine of the square root of two x. And then let's see, minus the square root of two x over two sine square root of two x. And now let's notice that this is no longer an indeterminate form. As we let x approach zero, this numerator is approaching the number one. This term in the denominator approaches zero, whereas this term in the denominator approaches one. But this one is attached to a half but we have a half in the numerator already, those will cancel down to the number negative one. So now let's look at the extreme left hand and right hand side here. And we have the natural log of our limit is equal to negative one, which means our limit L is equal to E to the minus one. But that's exactly what we kind of guessed it would be by using our sketchy calculation over here with an approximation. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.